Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA a certification training course. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to talk all about operating systems. This is from the CompTIA a certification, the Essentials Exam 220-701, Section 3.1, where we need to compare and contrast the different Windows operating systems and their features. There are a lot of different Windows operating systems that are now part of the CompTIA a certification, and there are a lot of features to go through. We're going to go through a number of those in this module, including things about Windows 2000, Windows XP, and now new for the CompTIA 22701 is Windows Vista as well. We'll step through all of that in this module. Let's start with an overview of operating systems. We take operating systems almost for granted, but why do we really even need an operating system on our computer? We spend all this money on hardware. Shouldn't the hardware just do what we want it to do? Well, the problem is there's nothing that really can control what happens between all of these different hardware components. The memory has to talk to the CPU, which has to talk to the hard drives. You have to be able to type things into your keyboard and use your mouse. And unless you have something that ties all of those things together, you're not really going to get very far with just a bunch of pieces of hardware that you've lumped together into a single set of systems here. You also need a very common platform for applications. You've got all this hardware, but you're going to do something on it, right? You're going to do spreadsheets. You're going to do word processing. You're going to surf the web. You're going to watch movies. There needs to be a common platform so that application developers can use this hardware. Eventually, you're going to want to use that hardware for something, aren't you? And us humans, us human beings, we, uh, we can't speak machine language. We know nothing of these computers. We need to have some way to get our human information into these machines and to get information out of these machines in a way that humans can understand them. We can't expect hardware to do everything for us. In cases where you don't have a human interaction, you just have a black box. We often refer to those kinds of computers as black boxes because we don't put anything in them, and they don't put anything out that we need to see. So. For operating systems and, and using operating systems, we need all of that operating system software to tie all of these pieces together for us. When you start looking at operating systems, there are some very standard features that you'll see when you start working with them. One is you have to have some way to store files on a hard drive or on some type of media, and you need to be able to manage those files. You need to be able to add files and delete files and rename files. Some of the files on our computers are programs and applications that run things that we can then use, or some of the programs are documents that we create, our own databases, our own spreadsheets, our own word processing programs. We also need to be sure that the operating system, one of the major features, is to be able to support the applications that we put on it. Operating systems manage the memory inside of our system so that there's plenty available for these applications to use. They handle taking information out of memory and swapping it down to the hard drive. There are a lot of back-end processes with operating systems that we just never see because all behind the scenes, the operating system is making sure that everything runs smoothly for you. You also need a way to get information in and out, that input and output resource. And it can be done in so many different ways. You have printers for output. You have keyboards for input. You have mice. You have USB drives. You have hard drives. You have SSD drives. There's so many ways to get information in and out of a computer. And we rely on our operating systems to make sure it's going to do that for us. And the operating system, of course, itself has to be able to be managed properly. So any operating system that you're going to find has its own methods inside of itself to allow you to access the operating system configuration, allow you to manage different aspects of the operating system, how it operates, how it looks on the screen. All of those things, regardless of what operating system you're going to use, every single one of the bullets you see here is, is in every single operating system you run into, whether it's an operating system that's on a mainframe computer or an operating system on our personal computers. You're going to find each one of these particular kind of aspects in any of those OSs. Let's step through a few of those. Let me give you a feel for those different components and the things we were looking at. Operating systems, when you start putting them side by side, these days they start to look very similar to each other. For those of you that are familiar with Apple Macintosh, this is Mac OS X. And you can see that it has some of those things we were talking about. It has a desktop. It has a toolbar at the bottom we can use to launch programs. It has a little icon of a hard drive, so we know where we can go to open up that hard drive to look at the files that are on our computer. There are pull-down menus up here. So many aspects of the Mac OS X operating system, very similar to the things you may have used in Windows, is just a 
different operating system from a different organization that uses different hardware. But ultimately, it's us getting information into the computer and getting information out of the computer, just a different OS to deal with. This particular Mac OS that we're looking at is Mac OS X, which stands for X is for 10. That's your Roman numeral for 10. Previous versions, Mac OS 8, Mac OS 9, you get the idea. I wonder what the next version will be. Probably 11. So that's what you can look at when you're trying to figure out what version of operating system am I running. Every manufacturer has an operating system version they'll make available to you. You'll also hear, especially with Apple Macintosh, it being referred to as the name of big cats. So the latest version of OS X is version 10.6 was called Snow Leopard. So if somebody says, well, to run that application, you need to be running Snow Leopard, what they're really saying is you need to be at version 10.6. And you'll hear the words leopard and tiger and panther. They all mean different versions of the Apple OS X operating system. Another operating system extremely popular is Linux. We see Linux a lot on the internet on the back end processes. Many of the websites that you connect to are running the Linux operating system, but it's a really nice desktop operating system as well. So this is a screenshot of Linux, and you can see many of the, the pieces that are on the screen are very similar to the components we were looking at in OS X. You can see there are pull down menus across the top. You can see there are icons on the screen that stand for different things. The programs that we're running are down here at the bottom of the screen. Uh, Linux is really a, a nice operating system. It's quite remarkable, in fact, that it's absolutely free. It's very similar to Unix. And the cost of it, you really can't beat, it being a free operating system. It's portable, it's powerful, and absolutely free. And when people start to use it, they find that there are many different kinds of distributions for Linux. You can get one that's specifically designed for the way that you work. A very common desktop distribution is Ubuntu. There is uh, Debian. There is Red Hat. Uh, also, Fedora is a free version of the Red Hat Enterprise uh, software. This Unix operating system has all of those things we talked about before. The applications that run in Linux, extremely powerful. So just another way to take advantage of the hardware you use by adding this particular Linux operating system to the top of it. Now, when we start getting into Windows, Again, it's a very similar environment. This is just a screenshot of my Windows 7 desktop. And you can see we've got different aspects to Windows. Notice that some of the things on the screen are things like this toolbar at the bottom, the, the programs bar at the bottom, is, is almost glassy. We can even have a transparency to it. That's a, a technology, a, a visual mode within Windows Vista and Windows 7 called Aero, A-E-R-O. And so when you start using applications, you'll notice that it's using the, the front end, this graphical interface, in ways that we've never done before. There's also this really great sidebar with gadgets on it that attaches to your Windows desktop now. And you can add and remove that different gadgets to it. If you don't like the clock, you can get rid of it. You can change the way it looks. There's a slideshow. You can put all kinds of different things into your sidebar here so that you can really customize and personalize the operating system run in specifically for what you'd like to do.